center design and how we integrate both technology requirements and infrastructure requirements into the design process. And a few things that we're going to talk about from an agenda perspective is we'll, we'll talk about takeaways, what we hope everyone can, can take back to their own data center projects as a result of the presentation today. But before we do that, I can kind of see out there, can I just get a, do a quick poll, uh, show hands if you are a designer, you know, consultant or installer that's here today? Okay, excellent. And if you represent manufacturer, whether through distribution or, or directly? Okay, and end users? Okay, excellent. So we'll, we'll talk about the goals specific to everyone in the room today. And then we'll talk about why we need an integrated design process and some of the changes that are going on inside the data center today that dictate the need for this change in methodology. And we'll spend the majority of our time talking about this holistic design process and a framework that involves five steps that you can utilize to achieve this type of data center design. And then at the end, we'll, we'll keep some time for questions. And again, I'll respectfully request that we hold uh, questions till the end of the presentation. So, Getting started, first what I think is important to, to understand is what today's presentation is not focused on. And by that I mean when we talk about design in the traditional sense of the word, what we're going to talk about today is not the actual nuts and bolts of sitting down in front of AutoCAD and drawing how you lay out your data center or how you provide power and cooling to your data center environment. And the reality is you know, there's no one-stop solution to doing that. And what we're going to talk about today is a little bit more in the infant stages of the design process and what we like to refer to as the conceptual phase. So before we get to that process of sitting down and actually drawing out our data center, we need to go through this information collection process. And that's a process that many times is overlooked. And that's what we're really going to focus all of our attention today. And that holistic framework applies to that process. So when we say holistic, really what we're referring to, and as you all probably know, the, the term holistic is loosely defined as concerned with the whole as opposed to separation of individual parts. And we really think that's a critical perspective when we're talking about data centers, because as we all know, data centers are increasingly more complex, and they have a lot of individualized systems that are mission critical systems that make up this environment. However, if we, if we want to really be able to understand all the systems from a high level, we need to take a little bit of a step back and get outside of those individual disciplines and try to think about how all these systems can co coexist seamlessly with one another as part of a general data center ecosystem. And we think that high level perspective is really what we refer to as a holistic perspective of the data center. And that's what we're going to try to achieve today by going through the framework by which we collect information to go into data center design. So takeaways for today. I think everyone, regardless of your role in this room, is an important part of the, of the data center process. And we, I think that the takeaways are pretty simple, but something that you can all apply to your own individual projects or your customers' projects. And the first is the specific framework that we're going to talk about. We want you to be able to take that framework away today and apply it in your own environment. And as a result of that framework, we want you to be able to articulate your exact requirements or your customers' exact design requirements for your data center. And that sounds pretty simplistic, but as we're going to talk about, the way in which we went about data center design in the past was largely based on assumptions. And we want to avoid that process and create more customized and right-sized designs for our customers. And by utilizing this framework, we think we can articulate more exact requirements for the data center design process. The last thing that we're going to talk about at the end of the presentation, uh, if, if we have time, hopefully, is how to achieve a predictable growth model. And we think this is a byproduct of utilizing this holistic framework and something that your customers can utilize in their environments moving forward from a day-to-day -day operations perspective. So, <clears throat> why do we need an integrated design process? I think everyone in this, in this room, being part of the industry, understands that there are a lot of really intelligent people out there in the information, te information technology world. And if we talk specifically about equipment manufacturers, they're figuring out how to do things better and faster and all while requiring smaller footprints inside your racks. And that's, that's revolutionary and innovative and very advantageous to all of us and especially to our customers. But what we're starting to see as a result of that is some of our old strategies for designing data centers are starting to prove to be ineffective. And we're going to talk about old and kind of historical data center design perspectives a little bit today. And when I say that, I'm referring to the process by which 
we made assumptions about how we should design our customer's data center. And some of those assumptions that we talked about are listed here. So <clears throat> we would take a, you know, a generalized space and we would estimate the amount of watts per square foot. Or we would estimate that it's two to three kW per rack, it's kind of a generalized industry standard that we utilized. And in addition to that, we would always oversize our systems to accommodate growth. So if a customer had 100 kW today on their initial build out, they wanted to be able to grow to 300 kW, well we would build in 300 kW of cooling from day one, 300 kW of UPS, etc. And these were all assumptions that we made as part of that design process, and essentially the customer was kind of left to live with it. And if we think about it, and think about these changes in the data center equipment, and we all understand there are just inordinate amounts of different types of technology equipment available out there today. And the more and more that changes, and the more dynamic it becomes, the more complex it becomes, the less and less valid these assumptions become. And so we're really kind of doing a disservice to our customers by making assumptions about what equipment they're going to have in their data center without understanding it down to a little bit more of a minute detail. So <clears throat> the, the, the changes in the data center environment are really affecting this design process. We really, as a community, need to understand that the application we're designing around is this evolving equipment, this rapidly evolving equipment. And as a result of that, we think that a change in methodology is required. So instead of taking this historical approach whereby we make assumptions about what's going to be in the data center, we want to rethink that and take a little bit more of a proactive and informed approach to it. And that's really what we believe is a holistic model. Again, our historical approach was not really to involve a lot of customer interaction. And that was fine because it was really the way that we did things at that point in time. But as the equipment continues to evolve, our customer requirements are starting to evolve as well. And we all understand that being in the industry today, that our customers are talking about things like scalability and modularity and energy efficiency. We just heard a, a, a large uh, presentation on the energy efficiency and the importance of that in data centers. Of course, everyone's talking about that today. And manageability, you know, our, our customers want visibility of all these systems inside their data center, and they want to be able to manage that over one centralized IP-based network. And they want to do all these things, and they want to do it while they're minimizing their upfront investment. And as we look at that, it, it's, it's kind of a tall order when we think about it. And, and in reality, it is. But again, really what we want to stress is that as a result of all these changes and the combination of the changes in dynamics and the equipment that we're installing in the data center today and our customer requirements evolving, we really need to employ a new strategy to ensure the success of our data center designs. And what's really critical in that process is that all stakeholders in the design process are responsible for the strategy. And we're going to talk about who those stakeholders are in a minute. But again, if we reference back to how we did it in the past, we didn't always involve all the right players as part of the organization. And we need everyone to understand this process and buy into this change in methodology if we're going to move forward as a group and create this new holistic type of design. So, we're going to go through each one of these steps in detail, and this is what we're going to spend the majority of our time talking about today, the specific holistic design framework. And the first step is identifying stakeholders. Step two, and again, we're going to go through these in detail, is high-level goals for the data center. Step three is requirements collection process, a little bit more detail-oriented. Step four is, is kind of an extrapolation of that, which is a load profile. And then the fifth step to that once we've done all of these things, step through four, we can start talking about design in kind of the traditional sense of the word. So, <clears throat> starting with step one, excuse me. It's almost kind of cliche to say that the most critical step to the process is to involve the right players. And it really is simplistic, and we understand that. However, if we're honest with ourselves, and we think back to data center projects that we've done in the past, or any projects that we've done in the past, we know that there may be our power struggles inside of our organizations, or we just didn't always involve all the right players from our customers' teams as part of the process. And that was fine, because historically, you know, we didn't take an in-depth, information-intensive approach to designing data centers. You know, we would take this box, say it was 5,000 square feet, and we would walk to an engineer and say, here's, here's the space that I have. And we would make assumptions about what was going in that data center and engineer it based on 